Well, welcome to Word Time. This is Coach Shelby with Coach for Christ, and we're going to be talking about seeking the face of God today. And to preface this lesson, I'm going to give you a little background on it. Um, I've often wondered and wanted, but with my schedule, and that's not an excuse, I'm just talking, so bear with me, but maybe somebody here can relate, maybe somebody can be blessed, uh, as I'd love to do one of these messages daily. But, you know, when you get into 80 uh, plus hours a week into football season and uh, you feel like you're just being spread too thin sometimes. And, it, you know, of course, there's always that time with the Lord or whatever. But there are times that I know we have brothers and sisters in the Lord that need to hear an encouraging word. And there are men and women who've been called to preach the gospel. Um, there are men and women who are, who prophesy. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of prophesy, or prophecy, not prophesy, but the prophecy. And, uh, and that is prophecy. We, when we speak the word of God, we are prophesying. Now, don't pervert that. Uh, your mind goes to the Old Testament and the men who were given the word of God as it was being written. But that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, there's nothing new. Uh, we have the totality of God's word. We have all that we need. So the, the gift of prophecy now, and, and I'm bringing it down to a very basic level. Yes, of course, there's more to it. But is the ability, because we have the Holy Spirit and we're led by the Holy Spirit, and delayed obedience is disobedience. So immediately we obey the Holy Spirit in the proper application of the Word of God for that particular situation. Now that's really, really, that, that brings it down to a level that, uh, an elementary level that anybody can understand. But to preface this lesson, seeking the face of God. Um, last week I was walking, I don't remember what day it was, I, I walk in the morning and and uh, I've got a, actually a, a fox that sometimes comes out and walks out in front of me. So uh, I don't know what's going on. I know I've not been called to build an ark, whatever. Don't know how to build one. Praise God. But I have been called to call people to the ark, the saving cross by the blood of the lamb, Yeshua. You will not be saved unless you come to the cross of Calvary where the blood of the lamb was shed. But again, I was on fire as I was walking. And in my prayers, I surrendered or surrendered to the Holy Spirit, my prayer, because my words um, are, are really useless, but the word of God through you moves mountains. And I, and I just spoke of seeking the face of God. And I was spoken to seek the face of God. I remember I come home, my wife was up by that time, and I was sharing with her. And as we began to pray, and it hit me this morning that I probably should have shared that word uh, before now. And uh, the, the scripture came to mind this morning concerning that was in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19, that it says, uh, do not quench the Spirit. And many times the Spirit of God, and I'm not saying everything that God gives you is for sharing immediately, but just go with me and let the Holy Spirit discern and sift this out for you. But in, my, in this context of what I'm speaking in, I was on fire for this word. I just received a revelation from God but then I delayed that word because I had other things going on. Now, I, didn't, I don't turn my back on God. I'm always in the word. But I felt like that was the timing of that word to be shared. And, you know, many times God, you know, we, we like to have our church services on Wednesday and Sunday and all those things. And that's great. And I know we have to have a plan because I know people have to work. I get all of that. So, so, again, don't twist anything that I'm saying. But just imagine if we were like it was in the beginning of the book of Acts, where people came together and broke bread. They assembled and they moved as the Holy Spirit said, move immediately. Again, delayed obedience is disobedience. And sometimes you can receive a word of God that is for this season, prophetically presenting that word that was for that day. And you delay a week and now the anointing uh, to present that message may be gone at that time because it was meant for another time. Uh, again, I'm a football coach. You know, a lot of times kids say, well, I, sometimes I don't feel good. I don't get, I, I, I don't like to, you know, Friday, whatever the case may be. And let me tell you what, I used to have a note on the front of my desk when I was a carnal man. And this fits this, even though I was carnal then, I wasn't serving the Lord. And I said, the, the game is scheduled. The, the situation exists. The job is to win. Win. Praise God. And unfortunately, I wasn't saying praise God then. I was a carnal man. The game is scheduled. The situation exists. The job is to win. So that, that schedule came around every Friday and still comes around every Friday. And it don't matter whether you're sick on Friday and you felt great on Monday. Maybe you were ready to play on Monday. The game is scheduled on Friday. So there's some benefit to that. I'm not negating your gathering and what day you do that. But there's also some benefit to moving, great benefit, 
as the Holy Spirit leads immediately at that time, whether it be Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever the case may be. And when you don't do that, many times, according to 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, we quench the Spirit of God. It's like, God, there's an anointing on you to minister to a particular person. Maybe it's your workplace. But because of fear, you allowed fear to come in. And remember, the presence of fear is, is, can be very evident that the presence of God is there to overcome that. Okay, if there's no obstacle to overcome then in, in, in our lives, then most of us would have no need for God, or at least that's how we would think. And so always remember that. But the anointing was there for that moment, but we let fear get the best of us, so we didn't share. We saved it for another day, and that same anointing, that same, it just wasn't the same. Quench not the Holy Spirit. Now, most of the time we quench the Holy Spirit through sin, but is delayed disobedience, is that or delayed obedience, is that sin? Something to chew on as we prepare to seek the face of God. Well, praise God, shall we get back to it. Psalm 27, seeking the face of God. And in verse 1, I'm going to go through this. We have 14 verses, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit as best I can. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is strength of my life, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is light. It tells us in John 3, but men love darkness, lest the light expose their wicked deeds. In John 3, he is the light of the world. And yet the Bible says that you're the salt of the earth and the, and the light, because he that is in you brings these things forth. When I'm weak, Paul said, then I am strong. The Lord is my, the strength of my life. The Bible says that you submit to God. If you go to James 4, 7, and 8, those two verses are awesome in chapter 4. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Submit to God. You see, again, the Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is, you can't, you're, many times we're too strong to submit to the authority of another. You've probably had some rebellion in your life, as I know I have. And there was times where you just didn't want to submit to that person that had a title superior to yours that basically evaluated your job or was to tell you what to do. We must learn by nature we are rebellious in submitting to authority. If there's any kids watching, listen to me. And a kid is anyone with a mom or dad. <laughs> I guess I'm a kid. The Lord says, honor your mother and father that it may go well with you. Let me tell you why. Because in doing so with the ones you can see, then it gives you a type and an example of how you honor the one that you can't see, though yet you see him in the spirit, but not in the physical realm. Verse 2, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. This is the, the, the inheritance of the, the child of God. The enemy will come against you. Notice again that the, the, the psalmist says, and I believe this is David, if I remember correctly, yet the Holy Spirit through David, that when my enemy came, they stumbled and fell. You see, the enemy's coming. I, I remember a particular place. I can't remember if it's Elisha or Elijah. And I believe it was the Syrian army that had him surrounded. And his servant was saying, uh, was, was in fear. And the prophet told him, he said, there are more of us than there are of them. And he prayed for his servant. His servant's eyes were open, and he saw, the, 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 if I remember correctly, the fiery chariots and the angels of the Lord that outnumbered the Syrian, the enemy army. Let me tell you something. There are more of us than there are of them. It may not be in the world in this materialistic or flesh realm, but in the spirit realm, the host of heaven, the holy angels under the instruction of God, they are for you. And if you're praising God, then you want to bring a mighty army on the scene, then begin to praise God because the angels begin to come in. And though you can't see them, you see them spiritually. See, we're seeking the face of God. This is a type and a shadow. In the same way, how can you believe that God is there and that God is for you? If you, if you need something carnal and physical to see, then you have no faith. That would negate faith. If I could see it, I wouldn't have to believe for it. I wouldn't have to hope for it. But I know it's true because there's been a measure of faith that's been downloaded inside of me that when I begin to praise and worship God, that the pillars of heaven begin to shake and the smoke fills the temple and the angels of God begin to join in and praise and worship. And time from time to time, you get in that place in the spirit and you'll actually begin to hear. Now, I didn't tell you what you would hear. But you'll know the presence of God 
is upon you, and your enemy will stumble and fall. You see, the absence of the praise and worship of God and the preaching of the gospel of Christ is a fertile soil, a fertile place for the demonic to hang out. But when the gospel comes, it stirs a ruckus in the kingdom of hell, and mountains must leave. They must depart. They must flee from you. The enemy must go. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. And I quoted a lot there as I'm in Psalm 27, and I'm mixing in James 4, 7, and 8. Verse 3, though an host, an army, should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. In this I will be confident. What confidence? The confidence of the protection of God, of the holy angels of God that God has sent to surround his servant. Verse 4, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I come boldly, according to the book of Hebrews, to the throne of grace. I have a desire to dwell in the house of God. He who dwells in the secret place, Psalm 91, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It is the presence of God that overshadows me. It is the presence of God as I worship and I sing praises to, I, to his holy name, that the power of God. You see, your whole life, many of you, drugs, alcohol, women, sexual immorality, uh, video games, TV programs, all of this, you're seeking something, but it is, it is, it is an imitation, that, a poor imitation of that, at what God has for you, which is his holy presence. And in verse... Five, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. You see, he is the rock of my salvation. In Luke chapter six, a wise man who hears God, Shema, to hear and to act on it, to do, to be a disciple. He digs deep, digging, representing your prayer life until he hits that solid foundation, until he finds Yeshua. You see the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew 25, she dug deep. She said, if I can get a hold of God, I shall be whole and healed. And she went after God. And when she went after him, the, the process of going after him was crucifixion of self, removal of herself and focus on God. So that digging until you build upon the rock in Luke chapter 6 is symbolic of praying, of seeking his face, that you may be removed from the equation and God may be manifested. See, many times, as I said over and over and over, many of you are too strong. Your flesh is too alive, lest you be crucified and die. You see, the reason why that we have dreams and visions those of you that are dreamers, is because it's the only time that your flesh sleeps. The carnal man sleeps and the spirit man is wide awake. Therefore, you catch glimpses of God. Praise God. Now, that works the other way as well. Because remember, Satan is a spirit. But I won't bother teaching on that right now. Psalm 18 says that by you, I can run against a troop. I can run against an army. And by you, my God, I can leap over a wall. This is not my home. I'm a pilgrim passing through. And my hope, my guaranteed assurance, not the hope that you would speak in English, is the, the presence of God is to see Yeshua face to face. And verse 6, And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. I will build my house upon my rock, Yeshua. My God, my God, my God. But let me help you a little bit. As Moses was placed in the cleft of the rock and the glory of God passed by and he saw his hinder parts in the same way, Ephesians 6, I put on Christ for my life is hidden with God in Christ, Colossians chapter 3. You see, don't just put on the armor of God. Get in the armor of God because in the armor of God, no fiery dart of the wicked may penetrate for this is God himself. For what arrow can the enemy throw at God and penetrate what he has prepared for those who love him? My gosh, more Lord, barakashi, got a little other tongue right there. I'm going to stop right there in case that confused some of you. Praise God. Hold on just a minute. Spirit of God is moving in this place. 
And if he's not moving in your place, say, God, God, I want to experience you too. I, I want to experience your holy presence too. And if he can use a donkey like Coach Shelby, my goodness, he can use a thoroughbred like you. Come on now. I'm not encouraging your flesh. They're still animals. But it's the presence of God that redeems you. It's the presence of God that makes all things new. It is the presence of God. Trust him. Put your faith in him. Worship him. Cry out. Speak the oracles of God. Speak the word of God. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. God hears you. You know that? Lord, when I cry, you hear my voice. Have mercy upon me and answer me. Psalm 91, I believe 15, says that God hears my prayer. You know why I pray? Because God hears me. You know why you pray? Because God hears you. You know why you seek his face? You know why that you make your petition before God? Because you believe he hears you. Even that doubting, that doubting is not the evidence that you don't believe. It could be the evidence that you do believe in the enemy trying to stop you from doing what you believe. Do you not remember Yeshua himself, fully God and fully man in the garden, and the enemy saying, you can't do this? You can't take on the sin of the world. Surely you've seen the passion of the Christ. Think about that scene. It, it wasn't, you knew that he was God. You knew he was communicating with his father. But the enemy's always there to kind of bring in. And I believe that it, this is allowed by God. And that's not a weak statement. Matter of fact, I believe it's ordained by God. Here's why. Because he says, I'm going to give you two choices here. And if I don't give you two choices, then you're not really making a choice. And I've given you something called free will. So here's your choices. Choose me. Choose life. Choose me. Choose the narrow way. Don't choose the wide way. Choose me. But I'm going to get, put two ways before you. Sometimes I'm going to put two directives before you. Sometimes I'm going to put opposing force before you. Sometimes I'm going to, I'm going to put fear in front of you. But fear was made to be overcome, for I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, my goodness, I've preached that before. Verse 8, when thou sayest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, I will seek. You can also look at a cross-reference in 1 Chronicles 16, 11. Now, seeking the face of God, I want to read some notes that I made to myself a week ago. And I was praying, seeking the face of God. God, your face I will see. You see, faith is believing for something that you haven't literally seen yet. Yet you've seen it, but you haven't seen it here. Carnal, spiritual. I know that God exists, and I've had dreams, and I've seen the Lord. But I can't tell you what he looked like because no man can see God and live. But I knew it was God. And if you've ever had one of those things, I knew it that I knew. And here's how I knew, because the dream that I had was according to the word of God. It was identical. It wasn't close. Remember, serp the serpent will make it close. It was identical to the Word of God. And when I was walking last week, I longed to see him as a bride longs to see her groom. I longed to see the face of Yeshua. Lord, God, your face. Now, of course, when it says seek the face of God here in verse 8, it's talking about seeking who God is. It's not talking about an image. So all of you guys that got pictures of Yeshua in your mind that you fabricated, that's called idolatry. Get rid of them. Seek his goodness. God is spirit, and those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. These churches that have pictures of Jesus on the wall, that's not Jesus. These people that are taking selfie pictures in front of a cloud that's shaped like they say an angel or Jesus, that's not Jesus. Because John the Revelator said that when he saw the Lord, he fell as dead. Isaiah the prophet said that when he stepped into the vision of the Lord in Isaiah 6, that he was as dead, that woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips that dwells amongst the people of unclean lips. That he was not worthy. He was worthy of death. He deserved to go to hell. But the coal off the altar, the cross of Christ, touched his lips. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. It set him free and redeemed him. It gave him a word. God has put a word in your mouth to glorify him, to magnify him. Praise to the Lamb of God. As a bride longs to see her groom, faith, hope, love does this. To reveal intimacy, fellowship, to be in the presence of God, divine countenance. This is not a made-up image. These are the attributes, characteristics. However, I don't know if I have the right English words to even describe to you. In Hebrew, panim, P-A-N-I-M, it is a, a plural, yet God is singular. 
Um, there is no exact word in Hebrew for the face of God. So we, we have words. We don't have a word. Who can describe him? What prayer except the prayer of the Holy Spirit can glorify him? What words can I speak? What action can I live in my life that would please God? It is only by the power of God and the leadership of Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God through me that brings me to repentance and to obedience to God. If you ain't been filled up with the Holy Ghost, you need to stop this recording and you need to say, Yeshua, Lord, God Almighty, thank you for your death, burial, resurrection on the cross. I repent. I plead the blood of the Lamb. I'm asking you to save me. I'm asking you to rule my life. And oh, by the way, I need uh, an infiltration of your Holy Spirit because without your Holy Spirit, I have no governor. I have no counsel. You see, on, 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 on lawnmower engines, used to, we used to put them on go-karts when I was a kid. We were wild kids. They'd put a governor on them because they knew people like many Coach Shelby, though I was never many. I was a chubby kid. He's going to max this thing out and going to kill himself. So they put a governor on it. Okay, The governor kept it at a certain speed. Now, on the contrary, the, the governor, the counselor, the teacher, the Holy Spirit will keep you from going the wide path. If you'll be led by the Holy Spirit, that you'll bring glory and honor to God. Your prayers will become wealthy. Your walk will become worthy. And it's not because of you, except that, God, I can't, but I'm willing. Do it through me, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Ghost. And now everything changes. There'll be a spirit of boldness, of praising and worshiping God in you and through you. Now you'll see many souls saved alive. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. God, hide not your face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not alone, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. I need you, Lord. Verse 10, when my father and mother forsook me, then the Lord will take me up. God is my father. I grew up pretty much without and I don't want to go into that. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to do that. But I had no leadership of a, of, a, of a man in my life, certainly not a man of God. But when I got the revelation at 32 or 33, I'm not sure, right around in that range, of repentance, and the Lord drew me to repentance, I realized that I'd always had a father. So it wasn't my earthly fathers that neglected me. It was that I had neglected the father of fathers. I had neglected the Spirit of God because, honestly, I was never raised in church. I wasn't taught anything, but there was always something in me, and I was in a lot of dangerous situations growing up. And I remember that when I would be in those situations, I would just say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. There's power in that name. How I learned that, God always had mercy. I saw demons as a child. I had horrible nightmares. I slept none I stayed awake for days at a time. I was in torment and anxiety, depression. I was taken to a psych ward one time. And I remember my, my, my mom hooked, had me, not my mom, but the doctors that my mom took me to, hooked all these electro stick on things. And they told my mother, they said, he's at the verge of a nervous breakdown. Now, this wasn't just a regular nervous breakdown, medicated type thing like half the United States is doing now. This was a breakdown, they said, where he would shut down and he would not function. He'd be sitting in a corner and not speak or talk. They said he's on the verge of that. I came from a broken home. I came from a divorced home. I came from a place of violence to where you had to fight to live, to where being a man meant you cussed somebody and humiliated somebody. I came from a place to where you were never called by your name, but you were called names. So I understand what some of you have been through and what you're going through. And when football came along, it was a breath of fresh air because you could knock the taste out of somebody's mouth and they didn't take you to jail for it. But you need to understand something. I had a father. I had a father and I heard that cry. And when I got in the deepest, darkest hours, I would say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. And I didn't even know who he was. You see, that was God working through me, in me and through me when I was too ignorant to even know what was going on. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you have a similar story, praise God. Verse 11, teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. I need the counsel of your Holy Spirit, and I need to be obedient immediately that I quench not your Holy Spirit. Verse 12, deliver me not over into the will of my enemies. 
for false witnesses are risen up against me. And as such as breathe out cruelty, people are going to talk bad about you. They're going to rise up against you, but they're not against you. Let me help you here. They hate God. It is the word of God through you. If you are a man or a woman of God that they come to persecute. So quit taking it personal. Stop that. That vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He'll deal with it. You just keep serving him. Verse 13, I had fainted unless I'd believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. My hope is in Yeshua. I would have fainted. I would have died. The enemy would have destroyed me if God would have allowed him. But he kept planting that seed, Yeshua, 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 Jesus, 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 the son of the living God. Verse 14, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Thoughts. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says that, that we are being changed from glory to glory into the image of the Son of God, Yeshua. We're being changed. You haven't arrived yet, nor have I, but we're on a journey, and we should not be today where we were yesterday. You should be seeking the face of God, and as you journey with God, there is always new obstacles to overcome. Did you hear what I said? Though I walk through, I don't camp out, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, that rod and thy staff, the comfort of the Lord, the comfort of what Jesus did on the cross, for he set you and me free from death, hell, and the grave by the power of his spirit. Won't you cry out to him right now, guys? Won't you say, Lord, and stop being sensual and I need to feed. just say, God, I need you in my life. And I know that your name is Yeshua. And I know that you died on the cross and I know that you have risen from the dead. I know you're the sinless, blameless, perfect son of God. And I know that you came to redeem me. I need you, God. And I give you my life rule from the throne of this heart, rip this heart out and give me your desire. Take this party spirit out of me. Take this bitterness out of me. Take this addiction out of me. I give it to you. I roll the care of it over on you. Lord, God, take this cowardice out of me, for a coward will not inherit the kingdom of God. And give me a word to preach in this season. Help me to prophesy according to the unction of the Holy Spirit, obediently, immediately. Help me to do that which you've called me to do. God, here I am, and you can take nothing and do something. So here I am. I am confident that you can move through me and that you will move through me because you're faithful. And you said that if I would ask you, do it. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Father, I will follow you and I, or, or follow you, and I will serve you all the days of my life. I pray that this was one more blessing to you, and I pray as you seek the face of God today, as you begin to see things God's way. I pray that you begin to worship God. I pray that you understand that the obstacles and the things that you have to overcome, whether it be sickness or whether it just be persecution or be a combination of both, that you realize that these are just mountains in your way, but mountains were placed in your way to be removed. Whosoever shall believe, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you speak to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And if you did not doubt in your heart, for it would be the heart of God because you just got a heart transplant, it would be removed and cast into the sea and you'd walk straight through it. Stop circling the mountain, brother and sister. It's time to remove the mountain. It's time for Goliath to go down. He must fall. It's time to go down. And the power of God working through you is in your submission to his word, your praise of his holy name, and your time with him. All of those are one and the same. Praise God. God bless you. Uh, we are at the oil bowl this weekend, and uh, but I wanted you to have something, uh, this video. I wanted you to have a word of encouragement. And uh, believe me, here at the oil bowl, they're getting the word of God. Yeah, it's a football game. Remember, it's a vehicle. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God.